Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're cracking open what looks like the biggest atmospheric fight on the planet right now. The Great Eurasian Weather Divergence. Exactly. We've got sources assessing the strategic risk, looking at forecasts for late December 2025, early January 2026. The continent is literally splitting in two, weather-wise. Two fiercely competing regimes. So our mission is to figure out why this is happening, and maybe more importantly, where the biggest risks are for you. And what's so fascinating is that the real catalyst for this, the, uh, the origin point, was miles and miles above our heads. Okay, okay. No. It was a structural collapse of the stratospheric polar vortex. We saw a major, and I mean extremely rare, sudden stratospheric warming event, an SSW. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Those who, you know, don't live in the stratosphere, what does that actually mean? Uh, right. We're talking about 15 to 20 miles straight up. Yeah. And you can think of the polar vortex as this, this massive spinning wall that keeps the coldest Arctic air contained. A container. Exactly. The SSW event basically slammed on the brakes so hard that the whole thing just... It, it flipped, the winds reversed, and that wall burst. Now all that super cold air is spilling south. A burst wall. Okay, I get it. So let's look at the result of that, this bifurcation. Out west, we have what the sources are calling a high-energy maritime regime. Right, and that's being fueled by these abnormally warm Atlantic and Mediterranean waters. So it's just endless moisture, endless energy to spit up these huge storms. We're already seeing things like storm bram taking shape. But then, in stark contrast, you look east, it's completely locked down, a severe continental winter regime. And what's anchoring that? A massive, and I mean truly enormous, Siberian high-pressure system. It's like an atmospheric anchor, this deep, stagnant pool of bone-dry Arctic air that's just relentlessly pushing west. So you have these two massive opposing forces. Where? Where is the battleground? Where do they collide? It converges right over Central Europe. And that collision zone, that's where the volatility just goes off the charts. It's creating the classic setup for absolutely devastating ice storms. And the sources are pointing to a specific risk here, right? A very specific risk. The formation of one to three centimeter thick ice shells on everything. Three centimeters of solid ice. What does that do? It means total failure. That is heavy enough to snap high tension power lines, to bring down utility poles. It's a systemic transportation shutdown waiting to happen. It's not just a slippery road. No, it's an infrastructure crisis. Let's talk about the temperature swings, this thermal whiplash. In the West, after a pretty mild start to December, we're seeing this Moscow to Paris cold snap. Yeah, that's a dramatic plunge. To a place like the Paris Basin, they're looking at one of the coldest holiday periods in maybe 15 years. Daytime highs struggling to even get above 2 degrees Celsius. But the truly strategic vulnerability, I think, is in the deep freeze further east. How deep are we talking? We're talking parts of Siberia dropping to minus 30, even mi minus 35 Celsius. Air so cold, it's an immediate threat to exposed skin. But the real crisis there is um, agricultural. The winter kill risk. Tell yeah. us about that. Well, the warm spell in early December melted all the protective snow cover. And even before this freeze, 37% of the winter grain was already rated in poor condition. So now the crops are completely exposed. Completely exposed to this deep freeze. You're looking at a huge risk of winter kill for the 2026 harvest. That's a major economic shockwave. And there's one more piece here, a critical logistical bottleneck down in the Caucasus. Oh, yeah. The Godari area is forecast to get, what is it? over 120 centimeters of snow in about a week. A meter and a half of snow. That much snow combined with that deep cold means the avalanche risk is through the roof. And that matters because of the Georgian military road. It matters hugely. That road is frequently closed by avalanches and it's the only real ground link for a country like Armenia to get goods from Russia. A weather event becomes a total blockade. So the big picture here for you, the learner, isn't just about how cold it gets. No, not at all. It's that resilience is now being defined by how well infrastructure can handle this thermal whiplash, uh, right? This violent swing between the extremes. That's it, exactly. This bifurcated winter, these intense cold waves happening inside a warming world, it's a clear signal of volatility. It's tied to Arctic amplification, a wavier jet stream. Which leaves us with a pretty big question to think about. It does. Are these sudden extreme events, these atmospheric collapses, actually the new normal, even as the planet on average keeps getting warmer? Something to consider as you watch things unfold.